Previously on Tyranny of Dragons. High up above the town, coming in and out of focus through the thick black smoke. A set of blue wings, a long scaly tail, a large open mouth, and a jet of bright flames erupting from it as it blasts another house. Greenest is being attacked by a dragon. I'd say that counts as dragon activity. Dungeon Master, you mentioned there was fire coming from it, but you also said it had blue wings. Would that not mean it was actually shooting electricity and not fire? Don't be a smart ass, Ben. It's all right, Barack. Yes, Ben, you are correct. I misspoke. It is indeed using its electric breath weapon, which on impact is causing fire. Thank you for pointing that out. No problem. Does this mean we now have a rules lawyer? I prefer the term rules advisor. Has less of a negative connotation. Advisors are great. I've got loads of them, and they're always giving me advice about what to say, where to walk, which teleprompter to read from, which girl's hair I haven't sniffed yet. Sometimes I think you say this shit on purpose. Anyway, my question is, are we going to be allowing someone to contradict our dungeon master, whether it's a lawyer, advisor, or a Jew? I'm not particularly fond on the idea of a rules advisor. Sometimes a dungeon master makes mistakes or changes the ruling, but at the end of the day, it's their game. Let them do their thing. I'm inclined to agree with you on this, Barack. However, this was merely a clarification on a particular monster which, for the purpose of this campaign, is relevant. I will allow Mr. Shapiro to act as the rules advisor for the time being. However, I ask in future for you to hold any advising until we are between sessions. Thank you, Dungeon Master. I will respect your ruling on this. Can we get on with the session now? I'm itching for some action. Yes, let us continue. You are standing on top a hill, looking down at the town of Greenest, which we have established is being attacked by a blue dragon. The fruit merchant who you had hitched a ride with is sitting on top of his wagon, quietly weeping at the horrific sight which lays ahead. Those poor people, they're doomed. Not if I can help it. I see now that this is what I was sent here for, to protect all those people from that big ass dragon. They shall know this night as dragons fall when I drive my ax into that monster's skull. I think I had you wrong, Stomp. You seem like you have a good heart. Then I'll get all the bitches. I spoke too soon. I turn to the merchant. Will you take us the rest of the way? It still looks pretty far to go on foot. The merchant looks shocked at your words. Take you the rest of the way? Are you crazy? I'm turning around and getting out of here before that dragon sees me and my horse and decides it's hungry. I reach up and rest my hand on the gnomes. Please, good sir, the sooner we can get there, the sooner we can help those people and maybe even do something about that dragon. You don't have to take us all the way, but your assistance will greatly help our chances of saving more lives. Roll me a persuasion check. Though it is dark, you can see the milky and now watery eyes of the gnome. Your words do seem to have had an effect on him as he sniffs loudly, rubbing his nose with his ragged sleeve. He straightens up and looks at you all. Very well, get back on and hold tight. We're going to be going fast. I'll take you to the edge of the town, but I will not stop. You'll need to jump as we pass it. Thank you. I get back in the wagon and call to the others. Let's go. I climb in as well. Same here. I do too. But as I climb in, I call to the fellow gnome. What's your name? The merchant jerks the reins and the horse takes off at full speed. He calls back to you over the rushing wind and loud hooves. I am Odbin Sticklefinger. As I try to remain seated, I contemplate my dreams. Given what we could see over Greenest, I believe I was right to come here. I hope you all have the skills required for what is to be a truly difficult battle. The horse charges onward, and after a short while, Odbin calls out to you. Get ready to jump! I think I speak for all of us when I say we're ready. You feel the wagon start to turn to the right, and you can see a few houses which have not yet been set on fire. Odbin calls out, jump now! Everyone roll me a dexterity check. Come oh, on, shit. man. My first roll. It's about damn time. Swolnald is successful with jumping off the wagon and landing without hurting himself. There was never any doubt. The rest of you, however, take one D4 fall damage. As you hit the ground hard and lose your balance, tumble and land on either your front or back, you take maximum damage of four. I cast Healing Word on myself, using up one of my two spell slots. I look down at this sorry excuse of would-be heroes and say to them, pick your teeth up off the floor and follow me. 
The squishy ones cover our ass. Beard face, you're with me out front. Time to see if you're as tough as you make out to be. No sooner as you say this do you hear a door bang open and hurried footsteps, followed by grunting and snarling and even more footsteps. A terrified voice calls out, Help me! Someone please help me! That'll be us then. Let's go. You run forward to the sound of the calls for help and see before you a young woman with blonde hair. She is wielding a shield and a broken spear. Surrounding her are six creatures of small stature with a reddish reptilian-like skin. You would recognize these as kobolds. Ugh, kobolds, such vile creatures. They must be in league with the dragon. I shout at the kobolds, get away from her. And I throw my hand ax at the nearest one to me. As you have the upper hand, roll with advantage. Roll to attack. Your ax lands in between its shoulder blades. Roll for damage. The kobold falls forward and lays motionless on the ground. This catches the attention of the rest and they turn to face you, drawing out their daggers as they do. Everyone, roll for initiative. You're up first, Bama. I slap my hands together and begin rubbing them. When I part my palms, three glowing darts form in the space between. Targeting the kobolds on either side of the woman, I shout, magic missile, sending the two lowest damaging attacks to the one on the left and the highest damage to the one on the right. Your missiles are successful in taking out both of the kobolds. The one on the right falls instantly after impact. The one on the left took the first hit, but the second pushed it off. I finish my turn after moving five feet back and to the left. It is now the young woman's turn, and with her broken spear, she attempts to strike the kobold directly behind her. Holy crap. Natural 20, baby. Let's go. I call dibs. With a single movement and an angry war cry, inspired by your action so far, she thrusts the jagged piece of the remaining spear into the kobold's neck, and it slumps to the ground with the spear embedded. My nipples begin to throb at the beautiful carnage I witness before me. You mean your characters, right? Right? Take your turn, Ben. I, uh, cast Firebolt at the one furthest away. That doesn't look good. Not all of us are destined for greatness. Unfortunately, Ben, that does not hit. Failing to maintain discipline with the art of spellcasting resorted to the Firebolt sailing over the kobold's head and landing some ten feet behind it. Crap. That'll be my turn done. You're getting too easily distracted, Shapiro. Let me show you how us pros do it. Raising my great axe in the air, I charge the kobold nearest to me. Fuck yeah. As I swing at this puny excuse of a lizard, I smile at the young lady and say, Hey, wanna compare nipples? Your great axe cuts through the kobold like a hot knife through butter, slicing it clean across the midsection. The top half slides to one side and drops to the ground as blood spurts out the top, splattering both you and the young woman. I smooth my hair back and give her a radiant smile, ending my turn. Okay, Joe, you're up. I draw my long sword and charge at the remaining kobold. I, too, will smile at the young lady as I pass her and plunge my sword into the monster's face. That's not going to be enough to hit it. Your attention on the young woman has made you lose focus, and the kobold was able to sidestep your attack. Oh, shit. It is now the kobold's turn. And after seeing how most of you made quick work of his pack, he takes the disengage action and flees into the town. Nice, we still won. The young woman looks between Swolnald and Gurmly, and then at Sharpen and Bama. Thank you all so much for saving my life, but I must be going. It is clearly dangerous around here. It would not be safe to travel alone. I agree, especially with that dragon flying overhead. It would be wiser to flee from this town and seek shelter elsewhere. The woman's eyes widen but you don't understand. I must get to the keep, the stronghold of our town. It is where my husband and children have seeked shelter. No longer do my nipples throb. Is there someone in charge we could speak with at this keep? She nods vigorously. Yes, Governor Nighthill. He is the one who ordered everyone to seek refuge when the raids started. Then allow us to accompany you to the keep. We can protect you should we run into any more trouble. The woman tightens her shield strap around her forearm and takes a dagger from one of the dead kobolds. Very well. But we must be going now, as they will be closing the entrance soon. Lead the way. The five of you begin to travel into the town of Greenest, 
And that, gentlemen, is where we will end tonight's session. Wait, Dungeon Master, can we clarify a couple things before we end? Sure, Ben, like what? Before we head any further, do the kobolds have anything on them of any use? The woman picked up the only usable weapon, and they carried no gold. One of them, however, had a piece of old parchment, which upon closer look is revealed to be a map of greenest, although incomplete due to scorch marks and torn pieces. Did we get the young woman's name? Not yet, so you could ask her on the way to the keep next session. Did we get any experience for this session? Ah. You have reminded me we hadn't discussed how experience and leveling will work in this campaign. This adventure is broken down into chapters. At the end of each, you will all level up. So for now, Donald, no experience. So about the same amount as you have with picking up women. Careful, Squishy Elf, for next session, I'll turn my attention onto you. Will you be using your throbbing nipples? Hey, you would be amazed at how many chicks that has worked on for me. If it was more than zero, I would be astounded. Until next time, gentlemen, good evening.